Hello, and welcome to Physics for Play. In this video, we are going to clean up uh, some of the loose ends uh, around the simple harmonic oscillator. Uh, we're going to be talking about the, uh, the difference between period frequency and angular frequency. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the role that the initial conditions play. And we're also going to take another look at the onsatz, the guesses we made for the solution. Uh, we had three different forms for that, uh, all of which worked. And we're going to show, uh, or we're going to show you how you can show that if you just do a little bit of trigonometry, uh, you can prove that those three solutions are identical. Let's get started. Um, I would be remiss if I did not talk about uh, something you always hear when you're looking at uh, simple harmonic oscillators. So we've talked about this variable omega, and I have informally referred to it as the frequency. Um, it's actually not technically the frequency, although just about everybody calls it that. Um, usually, if you want to make a distinction, this is actually called the angular frequency. Um, distinguishing it from the frequency, which uh, often gets the symbol f. Um, now, the, the frequency f that is, uh, that gets different units. That is in cycles per second. Um, the angular frequency uh, is equal to 2 pi times f. So the angular frequency, that gets units of radians per second uh, because you multiply by 2 pi. So it tells you how far around the uh, how, how far, if you're plotting the sine and cosine functions, um, how far they're going through their, their period, but telling you in terms of angles. Uh, some other notation you might see if you're playing with uh, uh, simple harmonic oscillators, uh, you might hear about something called the period. The, uh, the period is basically how long it takes to go from one peak to the next peak. It tells you how much time it is. Uh, the period is equal to uh, 1 over the frequency. Um, and you can um, uh, you can actually you can actually see this if you um, if you start plugging numbers and I'll leave that as a as a home exercise for you. Um, some other things that are important. Uh, initial conditions. So uh, we have we have an x of t that we've defined uh, here. If I just write out x of t, it'll give me the the value here. Uh, and if I go up here, I think the last amplitude I plugged in must have been a three because you can see that there. Uh, I could also plug in x prime of t, and that'll tell me what the velocity is as a function of time. I could do x double prime of t. It'll tell me what the acceleration is as a function of time. Uh, but I want to focus on uh, x of t and x prime of t, specifically at time zero. Um, these are your initial conditions, um, and they tell you where the function is starting. Um, so a lot of times you will see this written as x naught, which is the initial position, and v naught, uh, which is the initial velocity. Um, some other things that are worth paying attention to. Um, I am not going to go through this here. Um, I'm actually just going to copy and paste the equations we had before back in here. These are the different ansatzes, the guesses we had that solve the simple harmonic oscillator equation. Um, and I will, uh, I will use this as a home exercise, which is the physics professor speak for I'm too lazy and I don't want to do this right now. Um, but you can prove that these are equal to each other as long as you make some changes in the variables here. I'm actually going to make it clear that a1 and a2, you'll get, you, well, actually, no, I guess these are the same amplitude. We don't have to change those. Um, but, uh, you know, here's a trig crib sheet. You can look up these online. This one is from Paul Dawkins. Uh, I literally just pulled it off Google. Um, Paul Dawkins, you have a great uh, trig sheet, so thank you for that. Um, but yeah, there is, um, you know, there's 50 different identities, at least on here, um, that you can use to do uh, the proof and show that these are indeed equivalent. 
uh, up to you know just having different constants that uh, that you can exchange with each other uh, if you get the algebra right. Um, but that uh, that is all for now. Since this video is already pretty long, I am gonna stop here and give you a, a note that next time we're gonna do this a lot simpler uh, by using the Mathematica function dsolve, which allows us to skip doing the ansatz step. Um, so we had to guess and check uh, that our solution was correct. And then once we had the solution, uh, we could plug in and do a bunch of other stuff that was kind of neat. Um, we are, next time we are going to use Mathematica's command dsolve, the differential equation solver, that'll automatically solve that for you. Uh, so thank you for watching. Uh, if you liked checking out this video, uh, definitely come and um, watch more, like the video if you liked it, and uh, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these. But we will see you next time.